guitar or drums. It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Yes, it is, Chris. And moving on with chapter two, fractions, to look at lesson six, which is when we will answer some bid mass questions. What's bid mass? Perfect. Bid mass is a word that is used when we have more than one operation to perform. The word bid mass reminds us of the order, the correct order to carry out our operation. So, what does the B stand for? The B, the I, the D, the M, the A, and the S all stand for something, and B is brackets. Brilliant. B is your bracket. So, if there's anything that's inside brackets, you have to do that first. The I stands for indices. Brilliant. Indices. That's when you have squared or cubes or to the power of four, to the power of seven, to the power of a half, or you've got any square root signs. So if you have any powers or roots, you would then do that after your brackets. The D stands for divide. Brilliant. D is for divide. M is for multiply. Brilliant. So if you have a times, you would then do that. With divide and multiply, which one would you do first? Lots of people think and divide. Well, actually, if you only have a divide and multiply, you would just carry out that uh, calculation from left to right. So the divide does not come before multiply. Multiply doesn't come before divide. You just look at the question. So really what you do is you would do any brackets first, then you would do any indices, then you would look at divide and multiply. And if it's only divide and multiply, just do that from left to right. It's the same with the S on the end. The A stands for add. Brilliant. And the S is for subtract. Good. And again, if you've only got add and subtract left, you would just carry them out from left to right. You wouldn't do the add before subtract. You wouldn't necessarily do subtract before add. Just look at the way it is written. And as I said, do it from left to right. So this chapter is all about fractions. We're wanting to include bid mass. So let's look at some examples. So example one, we have three quarters take away two thirds times by one fifth. We can see here we've got to subtract, bam, 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 and we have a multiply. So we've got a subtract and we have a multiply. We need to think about the word bid mass to remind us of the order. What would we do first? Would we do the subtraction or would we do the multiplication? Well, because the word multiply comes first, in our bid mass, it comes before subtract, we would carry out the multiplication first. So the multiplication is the two thirds times by one fifth. So really what we're doing is we're leaving the three quarters and we're leaving the takeaway or the subtraction. We're leaving that just as it is. And we want to multiply the two thirds by the one fifth. So this is what we want to work out first. In order to multiply fractions, Bethany, what do you do? Brilliant, you would simplify if possible. Two thirds cannot be simplified. One fifth cannot be simplified. If you look at the numbers diagonally across from one another, well, again, the two and the five, you can't divide them by the same thing. And with the one and the three, you can't divide them by the same thing either. So we can't simplify it. What do you then do, Bethany? Good, you just multiply the two numbers at the top together, so multiply the numerators, and you multiply the two numbers at the bottom, the denominators, multiply them together. So two times one is obviously two, and three times five is 15. So we have just carried out the multiplication. Woohoo! Big smiley face, well done. But then what we've got is we've got this subtraction, we've got the three quarters take away the two fifteenths. So now we want to think about that. In order to subtract fractions, Jake, what are we needing? We need the denominators to be equal. We do, Jake, yes, well done. So here the denominator is four and here the denominator is 15. So we need to think about our four times table with four, eight, 12, 16, and so on. Think about your 15 times table. So 15, 30, 45, 60, and so on. And find the smallest number that's in both of those times tables. In other words, the lowest common denominator. What is the lowest common denominator? Good, the lowest common denominator is 60. So we want to rewrite the three quarters as so many sixtieths, and we want to do the same with the two fifteenths. We want to write that as so many sixtieths. So what we think is, how do we go from four to 60? What are we multiplying by? Well, one way to work that out is to go the other way and divide. So if you do 60 divided by four, you end up with 15, which means to go from the four to the 60, you're multiplying by 15. 
So, because you're multiplying the 4 by 15 to get to 60, you also multiply the 3 by 15 as well to get an equivalent fraction. So 3 times 15 gives us 45. With the other fraction, we're going from 15th to 60th, so we need to work out what we're multiplying by here. So 15 times what gives you 60? Brilliant, it is 4, good. So you're multiplying by 4, which means you would then multiply the numerator, the number at the top, by 4 as well. So 2 times 4 gives you 8. After that, we've got so many 60ths and so many 60ths. Woo! So now we can subtract and our answer will be so many 60ths. But all we have to do is do 45 take away 8. And 45 take away 8 is? Brilliant, it is 37. So our answer is 37 60ths. Woo! High five. Example 2, 3 and a half plus 2 and 1 third multiplied by the 3 quarters. So we can see here we have an addition. Boom. We have a multiplication. Boom. We have two operations. We need to think about the word bid mass in order to work out what we would do first. One way of working out, working out with bid mass is to have a look at the letters. So are there any brackets here? No. Are there any indices? Are there any powers or roots? No. Is there a divide? No. Is there a multiply? Well, yes, there is. We have this multiply here. We've got the two and one third multiplied by the three quarters. So that is what we would do first. However, because we have two and one third multiplied by the three quarters, we want to make this easier for ourselves. So before we actually go into bid mass and multiply, what would actually make this calculation easier? Perfect change any of the mixed numbers into top heavy or improper fractions. So three and a half, even though we're not doing anything of that just yet, let's rewrite it as an improper fraction. So the way you do that, three times two is six, add on one is seven, so that would be seven halves. We're wanting to add on two and one third, rewrite that as an improper fraction. So two times three is six, add on the one is seven, so it'll be seven thirds. And then we're multiplying by, well, three quarters can just be left as three quarters. It's a proper fraction. We are still wanting to work out the multiply part first, though. So with the seven halves or seven over two plus, we just leave that as it is. We want to carry out this calculation, though. Seven thirds multiplied by three quarters. We're multiplying two fractions together. What do you always look for first when you're multiplying fractions? See if you can simplify. Perfect. We want to see if we can simplify. So, 7 thirds doesn't simplify. 3 quarters doesn't simplify. Diagonally across 7 and 4, you can't divide them by the same thing. But with the two threes, you can divide them both by 3. So divide that by 3, you get 1. And divide that by 3, you get 1. So we can simplify that. Rewriting it to make it a bit clearer, that means then we would have a 7 and a 1. And here we would have the 1 and the 4. So I'm just rewriting that to make it a bit clearer. Again, we are still wanting to carry out this multiplication first, but now it's dead easy. We've simplified it, so all you do is multiply the numbers at the top together and then the numbers at the bottom. So our 7 over 2 plus stays just as it is. And if we do 7 times 1, we would end up with 7. And if we do 1 times 4, we get 4. So we have 7 over 2 plus 7 over 4. We are left then with the addition, and it's the last part here, uh, with our bid mass. It comes after the multiplication, it's the only thing left. So, how do you add fractions? What do you have to look for? Perfect, you have to look for the lowest common denominator. So think about the two times table, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and so on. Think about the four times table, four, eight, 12, 16, and so on. What's the smallest number that appears in the two and the four times table? Four, perfect. Four is in them both. So we want to write seven over two as something over four. And really, with that seven over four, we could just leave it because it's already over four. So the only thing we have to do is write the seven over two as quarters. So the way we do that, we're thinking about this too. How do we change that to the four? How do we do that? What do we multiply by? Perfect. Well, two times two would give you the four, so we're multiplying by two. So what we've got to do then is we've got to multiply the seven by two as well. So if you do the seven times two, that would give you 14. So we end up with 14 quarters plus seven quarters, 14 fourths plus seven fourths. Because the number at the bottom is the same, it will just remain as quarters. But if we add the numbers at the top, we would end up with 
21. Perfect. So we get 21 quarters. Because that is an improper fraction, our top heavy fraction is best to rewrite it as a mixed number. And if we rewrite that as a mixed number, well, the way you do that is you think 21 divided by 4 is... How many times does that go? 5. Brilliant. And what would your remainder be? You would have a remainder of 1. Perfect. And because we're working with quarters, we just keep it as 1 quarter. So our answer will be 5 and 1 quarter. Woohoo! Example 3, 1 and a third multiplied by 4 fifths divided by 2 and 2 thirds. Once again, there is more than one operation. So we need to think about bid mass. Before I'm jumping into bid mass though, I have mixed numbers. And because we've got mixed numbers, you're probably best to rewrite them as improper fractions. So one and one third, rewrite that as an improper fraction. Do the one times the three, which is three. Add on the number at the top, which is four. So that will be four thirds. We're multiplying that by the four fifths. We can't do anything with that. And then we're dividing that by the two and two thirds. That's a mixed number. It's a whole number part and a fraction part. So rewrite it as an improper fraction. Two times three is six. Add on the two at the top. We'll give you eight. So that's the same as eight thirds. Once again, there's more than one operation. So if you're thinking about bid mass, well, brackets, are there any brackets? No. Are there any powers or roots, which is what indices are? No, there's not. What do we have though? Well, we've got a multiply and we've got the divide. But because it's only to the divide and multiply, we don't do the divide first. If it's divide and multiply, we do it in order from left to right. So it means we would do the multiply first and then the divide. That's something that people mix up a lot of the time with bid mass. The divide doesn't come before the multiply. You would, they go together and you would just do that in order from left to right. So we're wanting to multiply them because that comes first in this order here. We've got the multiply. So we would want to do that first of all. So to multiply fractions, can you simplify? Four thirds doesn't simplify. Four fifths doesn't simplify. The four and the five, you can't divide them by the same thing. And the four and the three, you can't divide them by the same thing. So all we want to do is multiply the numbers at the top and multiply the numbers at the bottom. So multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. Four times four is 16. Three times five is 15. So we get 16 fifteenths. And we want to divide that by that eight thirds. Again, because we only had multiply and divide here, we just do it in the order that is given from left to right. The divide does not come before multiply. However, what that leaves us with is the divide here. So we're wanting now to work that out. We're dividing these two fractions. So 16 fifteenths divided by eight thirds. How do we go about dividing fractions? What is it that you do, Tab? Perfect. Tab is right. You turn the fraction on the right upside down. So instead of 8 over 3, you would have 3 over 8. And what does that magically do? Perfect. It changes the divide to a times. So we have 16 fifteenths times by 3 eighths. To multiply the fractions once again, check if you can simplify them. 16 fifteenths doesn't simplify. 8 thirds doesn't simplify. But 16 and 8, we can divide them both by the same thing. You can divide them by 2. You can divide them by 4. Or you can divide them by 8. Which one would you divide them by? 8. Why? Because it's the biggest. Perfect. Divide them by the biggest number you can. So 16 divided by 8 to give us 2. And 8 divided by 8 as well to give us 1. Look at here, the numbers across from each other, the 3 and the 15. Can you divide them by the same thing? Yeah, you can. You can divide them by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 15 divided by 3 will give you 5. So multiply the fractions together then. It really means we've got that 2 over 5, and we're multiplying it by 1 over 1. So really, if we're doing 2 times 1 and 5 times 1, we would get an answer of 2 fifths. And that is our answer for that question. Woo! Yeah. Example four, two thirds of, and in brackets, we've got three half, three and a half, take away one and a quarter. Note here we have an of, 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 and the of, if you ever see of, it really just means times. You know just the same way you would with your multiplying out brackets if you have two brackets, uh, I don't know, three A plus six. If you have something like that, a 3a add 5. If you have something like that, well, what you're doing is you're multiplying out the brackets. It's the same here. It really means you've got the two-thirds and you're multiplying it. But 
With our algebra, with the 3a add 5, we can actually work out 3a add 5. But what we can do is we could work out the 3.5 take away 1 and a quarter. So b for brackets is what would come first, and we would work out what's in the brackets. As I said, with our algebra 3a add 5, we can't work that out, we can't do anything with it, but we can work out 3.5 take away 1 and a quarter. So you would do that first. However, because you have mixed numbers, bam, 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 you would change them to improper fractions. So we would have the two thirds, and remember of means times, so we're going to be timesing that by three and a half as an improper fraction. Three times two is six, add one is seven, so that'd be seven over two. And we're taking away one times four is four, add on the one is five, so that'd be the five over four. From there, well, again, we're still wanting to work out what's in the brackets first of all, so we're still working this out, the seven over two, take away the five quarters. Two. Subtract fractions, we need the same denominator. So we've got halves and we've got quarters. We've got it over two and over four. So to get the lowest common denominator, think about your two times table, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, etc., And think about your four times table with four, eight, 12, and so on. The smallest number that appears in them both is quarters. So we need to change them both into quarters. So two thirds will stay just as it is. And really with this five quarters, that would stay just as it is. We can't do anything with the five quarters because it's just staying as quarters. But what we're doing is we're changing this one here, the seven over two, we're changing that to something over four. And what you do is you think, how do you change the two into a four? Well, you have to multiply that by two. So what we do is we do the exact same at the top. We times that by two as well. And that will give us then the 14 over four. Notice how we're still working out what's in the brackets. All we've done is we've managed to get the same denominator and because the denominator is the same, well, we can just subtract the numerators. So we've now got the two thirds times by, and then 14 take away five is nine, and then the quarters will just remain as it is. In order to multiply fractions, see if you can simplify. So two thirds doesn't simplify, nine quarters doesn't simplify. The numbers across, well, two and four, you can divide them both by two. So two divided by two is one, four divided by two gives you two. And with the nine and the three, they both divide by three. So three divided by three is one, and nine divided by three will give us three. Rewriting that to make it a bit clearer, well, we've now got a one and a one, and we've got the three and the two. So one over one times by three over two. Because we're just multiplying each number by one, we're doing the one times the three, and the one times the two, well, really, we would just be left with an answer of three over two. You're perfectly right. Well done, Cameron. Because you have an improper fraction, you're best to rewrite it as a mixed number. So if you do three divided by two, how many twos are in three? One. Perfect. And you would have a remainder of? Good, you've got a remainder of one. And because we're working with halves, we just keep it as halves. So one and a half will be our final answer. Woo! Try some of these questions in the Lecky and Lecky National Five book page. 344. It's exercise 32D, just questions one and two, but you're using bid mass to answer those fractions questions. Remember, any brackets, you would do them first, then your powers and your roots, your indices. Divide and multiply, you would do them next. If it's only divide and multiply, just do them in the order they are given from left to right. And again, with the A and the S, addition and subtraction, if it's only addition and subtraction that you've got, do it from left to right. Best of luck. Have fun. Bye.